Yo guys, what's up? Sleepyo here. Today I have a high-end sniper build for you and I made one of those a while ago but uh, I improved a lot of things and I wanted to show it again since the only thing that's the same is <laughs> the three-piece Aralli and that's, I mean, that's like the base for every sniper build I think. But uh, the rest is improved and uh, with different pieces and I also have some uh, suggestions on how to build it if you don't have the god road pieces. So as always, let's start with the specialization. And that one is quite easy. It's a sniper build, so you definitely want to go with sharpshooter. First of all, you get 25% headshot damage for rifles and marksman rifles. That's pretty nice. You also get 30% stability, which really helps with the SVD. The medkit you get from the sharpshooter is not very good. So if you want to use medkits uh, or armor kits, then I wouldn't spec into that. At least the specialization gun is pretty nice. Uh, it's my favorite specialization gun for sure. Um, it's really, really good now. Uh, I mean, it requires a little bit more aim and skill, I guess, than the grenade launcher or the gunner. But uh, if you can handle it, then um, I think it's the best specialization gun right now. And also the, um, the ammo acquisition is the best, I guess, since you fill up your group's uh, special ammo bar by one for each headshot kill you get. And I mean, headshot kills are definitely easier than explosive kills or kills against enemies with status effect or something. So I think that's definitely the best signature ammo. Uh, acquisition and with that specialization you also get a digital scope which I will come to um, in a little bit um, you don't have to play that but uh, with one particular talent it works very well so that's also pretty nice you also get two mods for the defender drone which you will probably play with that build if you play it like me at least yeah also pretty nice but we will come to that in a second when I show the build and the skills uh, overall I think though um, you can't really go wrong with sharpshooter and especially the 25% weapon damage and stability I mean, it really helps for snipers, especially with the SVD. This ability, you really need that. So, Sharpshooter is definitely the way to go. Alright, so let's get uh, into the build. Uh, as always, let's start with the guns first. So, I'm running an SVD as main gun. Um, the variant doesn't matter if it's a paratrooper or uh, the other ones. I don't know. I think there's one or two more. Um, as you can see, I have 92k base damage, which is pretty high. Um, but that SVD is also nearly maxed. The road is pretty high, like 400 off the max. So, that's pretty good. Yeah, the RPM is always 260 if you don't have Allegro, and the mag is uh, normally 10. I have extended mag, so mine is 15. And uh, as talents, uh, you have a few options. So Naked is a really good talent for SVDs, but that requires you to play with a scope, with at least a 8x scope, so actually a sniper scope. That's why I said the digital scope could be good uh, if you play the talent. Sure, it has a 12x zoom, and uh, in close range scenarios, it is um, not very practical. But it's a sniper build and I mean a sniper is in general not that great It's uh, at close range so I think it's fine. Naked however gives you 50% more headshot damage when your armor is depleted. Which is um, not something new to me. Since I'm playing Berserk for a very long time now and my armor is basically always depleted with all my builds. So that's not something new for me. Um, my health is 150k as well so that's not too low. I mean it's a really good talent if you can play with it and if you wanna use an ADEX or more scope. If not, then go for Ranger probably, or uh, probably Strained and then go Crit. I don't know if that's worth it though. I don't know, Naked is pretty good or Ranger, I, I don't know. It's like the two talents that come in come in mind now. Um, as passive talent, I would definitely go Optimized. Way better than Allegro, because you don't need more RPM. You most likely won't spam it at um, max possible RPM anyways. So extra weapon handling is definitely worth it. Uh, I also think that's better than Extra, so a little bit more ammo. Um, I would definitely go for optimized on the SVD. As a mod, um, as I said, if you have naked, then go for the digital scope or any other headshot scope with um, a zoom. Um, the digital is obviously the best because it's uh, 45 headshot damage. Um, on the mag, I have the five round mag. Uh, you get that from the weekly or the daily um, blueprint projects. If you don't have that, then go for the stability or reload speed mag. On the underbarrel, I would go for accuracy, and on the muzzle, I would go for stability. Simple reason for that, because on the muzzle, you can get 20% stability, but only 10% accuracy max, and on the underbarrel, you can only get 10% accuracy or stability. So if you want to go for any stability, which I would suggest with the SVD, then definitely go for that muzzle. Um, that's 20% free stability, so that's pretty nice. As secondary gun, I would definitely run the Nemesis. Um, it's a high-end sniper build. There's not really a way around it. It's definitely a really, really, really strong sniper against bosses. Um, you will see later in the footage. I think I'm doing a level 4 control point. 
that are basically one shot um, every NPC there, bosses, everything, it doesn't matter. With uh, with that much damage that I have, I don't even need to charge it up fully most of the time. But uh, I mean, that build is mainly designed for the raid. You can play it in the open world as well, but um, there's definitely better builds for that. Uh, but for the raid, for at least a Weasel, or the, the second boss part, and also for Buddy and Lucy, I think high-end sniper builds um, are the way to go if you want to min-max uh, or maximize your damage. So for two bosses in the raid, that build is uh, the best, and that's why I'm making it. Because, well, for Buddy and Lucy, I always used to play an AR headshot build, but I think if you have a good high-end sniper build with SVD, you can do more damage. The Nemesis is also good because it has that nice holster talent, which gives you 25% more headshot damage on your main gun, as long as you have a scope. That also works with the C79 scope, so if you don't want to play a headshot scope and uh, you don't want to play naked, then you could play the C79 scope and still get the benefit from the Nemesis. Alright, that's the guns, um, the two my gear now. Uh, this time I will just talk about the brand sets uh, first a little bit and then I will go into the pieces. So, with a sniper build you definitely want 3-piece a rally. Uh, the 3-piece gives you marksman rifle damage and the 2-piece gives you headshot damage. And the rally only rolls on the backpack, the gloves, and the holster. So you need to get it on those um, three uh, pieces. Otherwise, you can't get the free piece. For the other three pieces, you have a few options. So one really good option is just free piece Providence, because Providence gives you 5% weapon damage as free piece. So that's some free weapon damage. The reason because uh, the free piece Providence is pretty good is because of the Providence knee pads. They are really good. And also the Providence chest, at least one of them is uh, pretty good, but there's one chest that is better. I will come to the chest in a second though. Um, I will start with the mask as always. So, Providence mask or not, uh, doesn't really matter what mask you have, you just want hard hitting and damage to elites. So you don't want um, a gear set uh, mask, you just want a normal brand set mask with hard hitting and high damage to elites and probably health. Um, that's like the best stats you can get on the mask and that's the mask, that's already it. To the chest now, and there's uh, multiple options. I definitely know of three, but there's probably more. So the best chest you could go for is the 511. Um, or what's important with that build and the chest is that you just want hard hitting. If you don't have hard hitting, then forget about the chest. Just get a chest with hard hitting and at least one offensive mod slot. The chests that have an offensive mod slot and can have a passive talent are the 511 Tactical the Providence Counterforce Vest, and also the Zokolov Vest. Um, back then I think I had a Zokolov Vest, um, which just had hard hitting and one offensive mod slot. A, a vest like that is definitely better than a 511 with, without hard hitting. So hard hitting is really important for that build, especially if you make it for the raid. If you're just really only making it for open world, then hard hitting doesn't matter as much. But uh, I feel like it's mainly a raid build, so you want hard hitting, and if you don't have it, then I wouldn't play the chest. But back to the options you have. So the 511 is the best one as I said, because that one has hard hitting and two offensive mod slots, which is basically 12% um, more damage if you have really good mods. Or you can play the, the Providence chest, uh, the Counterforce vest though, uh, that's the only, the only option you have, the other ones don't have an offensive mod slot. This one has an offensive and a defensive mod slot, so you would even get some extra health, and yeah, you can also get hard hitting on that one. And with Providence you would have the 5% weapon damage. So you basically trade 5% weapon damage for one offensive mod slot, and one offensive mod slot is best case scenario 7% 7, 7 damage, let's say 7, because that's like really the max you can get. So you max lose 2% weapon damage if you don't have that god roll 511 tactical um, chest. If you don't have any of them, then uh, play the Zokolov um, chest, or any chest that has hard hitting and the uh, offensive mod slot. As attributes, you want uh, weapon damage, headshot damage, and health. And yeah, talent hard hitting, um, and this mod's just weapon damage, marksman rifle damage, and damage to armor if you have. The holster is Eraldi, um, that one is pretty easy. You want the Hera pouch holster, uh, that one has an attribute, which is health. Then you want a talent, um, either precise or hard hitting. Uh, I think hard hitting is better, um, because you already have a lot of headshot damage, especially with naked and a headshot scope. I think now I'm on... 250, that's, then, then I have a naked on top of that, that's 300, and then I have 25 from the Nemesis, that's 325% headshot damage. So you definitely don't need precise, but uh, it's it's not like bad or something. The Rally Holster also has an offensive mod slot, which is definitely pretty nice, and that is the offensive mod you want. Weapon damage, marksman rifle damage, and damage to armor. Sadly, I only have one of those Godroll mods, but that one is pretty damn good. 
Next is the backpack, also a rally. And that one you just want um, weapon damage as high as possible. And then probably health, but I would definitely focus on the weapon damage first. Um, I didn't do that, but uh, the only reason for that is because my highest backpack has 9% weapon damage. So I could have improved the weapon damage here by 2.5%. But I thought, you know, 38k health is better than 2.5% more weapon damage. Backpack always has an active talent that will never be active because it's either safeguard, skilled, or another utility talent that I don't know the name of right now. And a second talent you want hard hitting. This backpack also has an offensive mod slot, so that's some extra damage. The Aralli gloves, they are a little bit harder to get, uh, especially if you want those uh, with a passive talent, since the ones with a passive talent always roll with uh, destructive or capacitive, I'm not sure, like definitely uh, they always have the same passive talent, so you have to reroll the passive talent, and that means you need to get um, the perfect attribute. So I only have one glove with 9% maximum level damage, it could be 12, but as I said, those gloves are really hard to get, and that's literally the only pair with maximum level damage I got so far. Uh, I have one more pair with AR damage, um, but yeah, with maximum level damage, that's the only one I got. Uh, luckily actually, because that's 10% more damage to elites. If I wouldn't have those, then I would have played, um, I don't know, those rally gloves like that. Like, those are pretty common, just with an active talent, and then you can reroll the marks rifle damage. So, that is, that is like the most common, I guess. So, those are pretty hard, uh, you probably won't have them. If you don't have them, then again, just get those rally gloves with a uh, active talent. Probably opportunistic, um, that's fine since it works with snipers, but uh, yeah, it's not like that's gonna be active too much. And lastly, the knee pads. Uh, there's also two options, or even three options, actually. Um, the Providence are probably the best ones. They have uh, health, which is what you want, uh, because the other option as offensive attribute here would be a uh, crit chance, which you don't want. They also have hard hitting and the offensive mod slot. So the offensive mod slot is really important here on the knee pads, and the only three knee pads that I can think of right now are the uh, the Providence knee pads, the Wyvern knee pads, and the Overlord knee pads. And um, the Overlord knee pads also work for that build since they also have um, a blue attribute. So either Overlord or um, Providence knee pads both work, but yeah, probably Providence are better since you don't have that. Since you probably don't have that God Roll five eleven test. And uh, that's basically all the pieces. Um, my build is pretty min maxed. There's not much I can improve, but uh, yeah, I think I explained everything that you could do or that you could play if you don't have those good pieces. So let's get to the skills in the end and then also to the stats. Uh, as skills, I'm always running the Reviver Hive. Uh, I don't know, this is a lifesaver, even though it bugs out sometimes, but um, most of the time it helps. So I would definitely uh, run the Reviver Hive. And if you have a lot of health um, and naked or something, then I would definitely run the Defender Drone as well. If you go for mainly armor, then I would run the cam launcher, since the defender drone won't be as effective then. I mean, I'm on, I most of the time just uh, pop the defender drone when I'm on no armor and just play with my health. But as I said, if you don't have much health, then probably just go cam launcher and yeah, play with the armor. And then now to my stats. So with the SVD, again, 92k uh, base weapon damage, that's pretty high. No crit chance uh, as expected. Then a 244% headshot damage, which is increased by 50 from naked, and another 25 from the nemesis, so well over 300. A little bit overkill, um, as I said, I don't need precise on the holster, but uh, that's the only holster I have with a high health roll and also a um, talent I could reroll, and I need that holster for other builds. I also have 20% accuracy and 50% stability, and then also 15% weapon handling from the gun. So that makes uh, SVD definitely more playable, but it still kicks a little bit. But uh, on PC, it's definitely uh, controllable. On console, I'm not sure. But then you probably just have to shoot slower or not play the build. I'm not sure. Uh, let's get to the big stats now, though. So I have 26% weapon damage. Could definitely be higher. I mean, I have only 6.5 on the backpack. So that could be like 12. Uh, could be easily over 30% here. But I nearly have 60% maximum rifle damage. Um, on I'm on 56%, and together that is 84% more uh, base damage, basically. Marks and rifle and all weapon damage together. That's pretty high. 84% is pretty good. Uh, one of my friends has a little bit more than that. I think he has like uh, 90 together, um, which is insane. But he has a little bit better pieces than me. 
so nothing I can do there really. Uh, improving that one will be pretty hard since I need really, really god rolls now. And I feel like I already have a lot of god rolls with that build. So that's gonna be hard, but I think it's alright how it is now. Uh, it's a lot of damage. And I also have a nearly 100% damage to elites. It would be over 100 if I had hard hitting on the holster. And at one point I would definitely get that. But uh, yeah, right now nearly at 100 and then 84% more weapon damage. And over 300% headshot damage with my buffs. That build definitely hits pretty hard. And uh, that's it. That's my sniper high end build. Um, as I said, for the second and third boss um, in the raid, it is definitely the best build and I would run that. If you're on PC at least. I don't know how it is on console. I, I don't play it so I can't judge about it. Um, but yeah, on PC, really, really good build uh, for open world. I wouldn't run it personally, but if you like sniping, then go for it, I guess. With that said, um, I hope the build was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye. Incoming. Detecting additional hostile contacts. Supply room access unlocked.